Ho ho ho! Happy holidays, and welcome to the Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. Logan is going to be spending time with family, so today, I will be regaling you in the tale of the arch Arctic Dinosaur. Bundle up, when we learn about- What are you doing in my office? Oh, I- uh, I just thought you needed some help hosting. No, why would you think that- can, can you go please? I have an episode to film. Oh, okay, well, be sure to let me know if you need another host. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Why is it always the holiday specials? It's the Arch Antarctic Di- He stole my intro. It's, it's Cryolophosaurus. The earliest remains of Cryolophosaurus were discovered in 1991 by American geologist David Elliott while on an expedition with American paleontologist William Hammer. These remains were excavated on the frozen continent of Antarctica, specifically in the Beardmore Glacier region near the Trans-Antarctic Mountains. Elliot's team would discover the first fossils and leave excavation of these fossils to hammer. A total of 100 bones would be recovered from this and another nearby site, but only a few actually belong to Cryolophosaurus. This discovery in Antarctica is a rarity among dinosaurs, as very few genus have ever been discovered on this barren continent. This isn't to say Antarctica was devoid of dinosaurs during their time. Quite the opposite. Due to continental drift, Antarctica would have been 600 miles north of its current location, closer to the equator and having much more hospitable temperatures. As well as other continents like Australia being united with Antarctica during this time, meaning dinosaurs would be able to easily migrate between continents. Instead, few dinosaur discoveries from this area is more due to the intense cold and strong winds, making excavation difficult in the current environment. Besides Cryolophosaurus, only four other dinosaurs have been identified in Antarctica, including the Ankylosaur, Antarctopelta, early sauropod, Glacialisaurus, early Iguanodontia, Morosaurus, and small theropod, Imperabator. Once the original fossils of Cryolophosaurus were returned to the US, Cryolophosaurus would be officially described and named in 1994 by Hammer and fellow paleontologist William Hickerson, given the name Cryolophosaurus eliadi. While Cryolophosaurus would be the first dinosaur from Antarctica to be named, the previously mentioned Antarctopelta was the first dinosaur to be discovered in 1984, about seven years before the first remains of Cryolophosaurus were discovered. This species is the only recognized member of Cryolophosaurus, with the genus name stemming from Latin. This includes the words cryo, meaning cold, lofo, meaning crest, and soros, meaning lizard, directly translating to cold crested lizard. The cold is in reference to its continent of origin, while the crest references its distinct head crest, which we will discuss in more detail later. Its species name, Eliadi, was chosen to honor the geologist who first discovered the original remains, David Elliott. Cryolophosaurus was a Cerisian theropod, but further classification has always been tricky. This dinosaur has a unique mix of both advanced and primitive features, leading paleontologists to consider this dinosaur everything from a ceratosaur to an allosaur. The most recent studies, published by paleontologist Adam Marsh and Timothy Rowe in 2020, consider Cryolophosaurus to be an early neotheropod. The Neotheropod were a diverse group of early carnivores that would later evolve into more advanced theropods, like the Tyrannosaurus and even modern birds. The Neotheropods would thrive throughout the Triassic and early Jurassic, 
but would die out moving into the mid-Jurassic to give rise to larger carnivores like the Allosaurus. In particular, Crylophosaurus was considered a close and possibly earlier relative of Dilophosaurus due to their structural similarities as well as their shared distinct crests. Crylophosaurus was a fairly medium-sized dinosaur compared to other theropods, before its time in the early Jurassic, was possibly the largest terrestrial predator on the planet. Crylophosaurus would have measured approximately 21 feet, or 6 meters in length, and reach a height of almost 8 feet, or 3 meters at the hip. Based on this size, it most likely would have weighed about half a ton. The crest of Crylophosaurus is the most distinct facet of this creature. The... <clears throat> Pompadour-like crest, article's words, not mine, was a striking feature and would only measure a few inches in height. It would have consisted of pure bone, which would then be covered in a layer of material called keratin. The appearance of a crest on the top of the skull is shared among other dinosaurs, like the Dilophosaurus and Monolophosaurus. But the crest of Cryolophosaurus is quite distinct from these examples. The crest of these dinosaurs, like Dilophosaurus, would run parallel to their skull, starting near their nasal cavity and ending near the back of their skulls. However, the crest of Cryolophosaurus would start between the eye sockets and grow perpendicular to the skull. This bizarre shape has led some to nickname the dinosaur Elvisaurus after famed singer and toilet connoisseur Elvis Presley. Similar to Elvis, this headpiece was most likely used to attract mates. Its thin and odd shape would make a combat use unlikely. Instead, this crest would be used to attract members of the opposite sex, or intimidate rivals with strong colors. The skull of Cryolophosaurus would measure about 26 inches or 65 centimeters in length, sporting powerful jaws with short, backward-facing teeth. This skull would be supported by a fairly long neck, leading into its slender body. Like many early theropods, the body of Cryolophosaurus was more ideal for speed and agility, unlike later theropods like Tyrannosaurus, that would evolve into powerful, lumbering frames. Its arms were fairly long and well-developed, sporting sharp claws that could be used to grab and hold prey, or cut into carcasses. Their legs were fairly thin, helping the animal reach speeds of about 20 miles per hour. Its tail was stiff and used to help the animal maintain its balance when running. Cryolophosaurus would have lived during the early Jurassic, nearly 190 million years ago. It would have lived in modern-day Antarctica in the Beardmore Glacier, which is currently only a few hundred miles from the South Pole. Despite its appearance today, Antarctica was actually a fairly temperate and lush forest environment during the Jurassic period. Antarctica would have been further north from the South Pole, and united with land masses, including Madagascar, India, and Australia. So, its closer proximity to the equator would result in warmer temperatures and more year-round sunlight. Many scientists compare the conditions to modern-day southern Chile, with occasional snowfall and freezing temperatures, but overall a fairly warm and hospitable climate, especially compared to Antarctica today. Crylophosaurus would have been one of the largest carnivores of its time, only competing with small predators like the previously mentioned Imperabator, while hunting medium-sized herbivores like the Glacialsaurus. Due to their proximity to Australia and India, it is likely Crylophosaurus would also compete and hunt dinosaurs from these regions as well. The rock star-like crest atop its skull, as well as the prestige of being the premier carnivore of Antarctica, has earned Crylophosaurus a few roles in modern media. These include 1999's video game Warpath Jurassic Park, 2005's animated show Dinosaur King, 
2009's animated show Dinosaur Train, 2011's documentary Dinosaur Revolution, as an alternate skin to the Dilophosaurus in 2012's video game Primal Carnage, as well as its sequel, and the 2021 video game Jurassic World Evolution 2. Cryolophosaurus certainly had the cards stacked against it. Living during an often overlooked age, originating on an inhospitable continent, and competing for attention with heavy hitters like the Dilophosaurus. But with its bizarre appearance and lethal arsenal, Cryolophosaurus has still been able to stand apart from its peers. While its pop culture relevance is somewhat lacking, the fact that it has appeared at all certainly is nothing to cryo about. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Cryolophosaurus, and if you've heard this dinosaur before the video. I hope you're all having a great holiday and are looking forward to the new year. But before that, we have one more dinosaur to cover. The Amargosaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.